plan to kind of try and break the barrier of like solo female travel yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, for me, and this this is not for all solo female travelers. Like for for that、mm-hmm. to happen to me, I was like, okay, I'm not meant for this life. Oh, that's like, sad. Yeah. I'm Trizzy and I'm Leah, and this is Ticket to Anywhere podcast, bringing you the gear, tools, and tips to equip you for a travel-filled life. No matter your travel experience or lack thereof, we aim to be your first stop when you're thinking of where to go, how to get there, what to bring, and what to do. Catch the latest episode every other Wednesday on YouTube or your favorite listening app. We'd love to connect with you. Find Ticket to Anywhere on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. Welcome back to another episode of the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Trizzy at Triz Inc., and I'm、um, your other co-host, Leah, LA in flight. Today we have a good episode. That was fun. Yeah, got it off my chest. It's fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Today is a story time episode,、mm-hmm. and we've titled it "Unexpected Travel Moments That Literally Have Altered Our Brain Chemistry." So when we were brainstorming for this, yeah, you know. We've partnered with Rhino, the app that promotes inclusivity,、uh, travel experiences, and community. We've partnered with them and taken a look at their Travel Truths campaign, where everyone is talking about pivotal moments or experiences that happen to them while on the road or around the world. And so we wanted to dig deep into our arsenal and look at what has happened to us and stopped us in our tracks and. We kind of narrowed down some of the moments that we thought would be pretty relatable、mm-hmm. as well to、yeah. others, and also like a lesson learned,、mm-hmm. and just like you said in the title, unexpected. Yeah, some of the things were done or they were said, and it's some of those are situations where like you never think it's gonna happen to you, yeah, until it does,、mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So it was. Kind of therapeutic, saying things out loud. Yeah, and sometimes I feel like I doubted myself, being like, "Is this?" But like everyone has a, I, I was, you know, sometimes I doubted myself, being like, "I don't know, is this something I could talk about?" But then, but everyone has different personal experiences. Yes, you remember, like when, like during our brainstorm, I kept changing my stories, like, "Oh, do you think this is good enough?" Right,、like、I kept asking you.、Mm-hmm. We wanted, we mainly cut things out because we wanted to keep this. <laughs> <laughs> to a nice listening length, we for y'all. could talk all day. <laughs> yeah, we could. <laughs> yeah,、um, yours is all conversational, which is yeah,、so、mine's conversational because、mm-hmm. you're such a social butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> It's because I, qu- to, according to Trizzy, because I actually talk to people. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, you actually talk to people, so you have yeah all these my, juicy encounters. Yeah, you'll you'll hear Trizzy's are things that have happened to her, whereas mine were things that I either overheard or were said to me.、Mm-hmm. So. We got a good mix in there for sure.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with Rhino's Travel Truth campaign, like they've posted on their social media, all these different ones that really inspired us. Like, okay, we got to talk about it. Yeah, like if people are that open, we could be that open. Yeah.、Too. So we want to hear from you guys in the comments or in our DMs, in our emails, hi at ticket to anywhere dot com. Like your travel truth too. Like what happened to you? What altered your brain chemistry? What experiences? Definitely you had. Yeah. Yeah. I think there'll be some ones here that you resonate with, but we also want to hear what else has happened. Yeah. You know, um, one big travel truth for me is that I never get Starbucks while I'm on the road, but <laughs> here I am drinking a Starbucks back home in LA, <laughs> friends, and it is.、Uh, <laughs> That's a good one. Is that okay? That was great. <laughs> <Okay> . <laughs> Um, it's literally a venti ice cinnamon dolce latte with oat milk. Uh, I literally never get Starbucks outside of the U.S.、So、Same. Here we are. Same, but you know, sometimes <laughs> it's just easy. It's down the road, and I would say it is. It's the McDonald's、yeah. of coffee. <laughs> I decided on a grande royal English breakfast tea latte.、Mm-hmm. So it's basically English breakfast with almond milk, delicious, and I think two pumps of sugar cane syrup.、Mm-hmm. I don't like it too sweet, because originally it, they put four, and I'm like, damn, four. It's a lot, yeah. It's real yeah. sweet, but yeah, I would give this a six out of ten, though. I can make it better. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> cheers to another episode. Thank you, Rhino,、cheers. our sponsors, and、uh, enjoy this one. Yeah. yeah, cheers to us. Cheers to Rhino. Someone in the Philippines. 
Y'all know I love the Philippines. She does. We both do. Yeah. Actually said to me after I said, I was in like the south of Cebu, Moabo, mm-hmm. where it's common to do the sardine run. Okay. Get your patty, your open water diving certificate, whatnot. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to go to Kawasan Falls and swim around, enjoy the beaches, explore the jungle. And someone actually said to me, what are you doing in the Philippines if you're not scuba diving? There's tons of things to do, okay, first of <laughs> let's all. Not, let's break down the cost. <laughs> let's break down the cost of scuba diving, right. first off, anywhere in the world. If you want to get certified to scuba dive on your own, three days with an instructor, with a group, minimum that's going to cost you 250 U.S., I don't care if you're in Thailand, Indonesia, yeah. Philippines, Belize. It's going to cost you a minimum of that because you're paying for instructor's time. You're paying for equipment, right? Yeah. On top of that, you every time you go out for a dive, it's probably like, what, 50, 60, 70 US dollars. Doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. Hawaii, it will be even more expensive, mm-hmm. right? So to be able to afford that is a privilege. Yeah. And... Quick story, the reason I was actually kind of offended by this person saying, what are you even doing in the Philippines if you don't scuba dive is because I had actually failed a scuba diving course that I was trying, I was trying to get certified myself. Mm -hmm. And by failed, I mean I pulled myself out after day one. Yeah. Um, If you listen to our first Philippines episode ever, you'll hear the full story. I pulled myself out after day one. I wasn't feeling confident. So they only charged me for a discovery dive, which was like 60 US dollars at the time. But in my eyes, I had failed the course Mm -hmm. because I wasn't comfortable in the open water like that. I wasn't comfortable. I didn't feel strong enough to swim with the current. So because that had recently happened like a day or two prior, I was quite offended by this person who did not know me. I met this person in a hostel. Right. And they were like, what do you do here in the Philippines? Y'all, I'm Filipino. Like, my my family is from there. Is f- They still have roots there. They have property. They have lands in- land. They have houses. And I have, like, my stepmom's family mm-hmm. is there. I have quite a lot of friends around the Philippines. I'm like, there's so much to do in the Philippines besides dive. Also, how many local, Philippine locals, do we think dive in the Philippines? Out of 120 million people <laughs> that live over 7,000 islands, How many of them do we think go scuba diving on a weekly basis? Right. Let's do that math. Yeah. So that moment was actually surprising to me because that person assumed that every traveler or every foreigner that's coming to the Philippines, the only thing they want to do for a month is dive, Hmm. which couldn't be further than the truth for a lot of people that I know. Diving's a privilege. Diving's expensive. Yeah. Diving is rare. Yeah. And diving is for the able bodies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did he or she say this? It was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> did they did he say this um after you had told him that you uh quote unquote failed? I don't think you failed first no, of all. No, I you know, I know. I just yeah. I didn't fail. I pulled myself down. But yeah. in my own eyes I failed. Um, to be honest, I don't I'm pre- I don't exactly remember, but I'm pretty, pretty sure mm-hmm. that I they did not know that story before. I see. But I'm like, why would you say that to anybody? Yeah. Because like they that's also another thing. They didn't know that I was sensitive mm-hmm. to me like just pulling out of that course. Right. Because if they knew that, do you think they would have said that? We don't know. Yeah. But, but still, even for me, who I've never even tried to scuba dive or take a course, mm-hmm. I want to. Mm-hmm. But for you to get into the water, to even think, pay for it, yeah. do all that, that's amazing because I'm still scared of just doing that. Yeah. So even for a person like me who didn't experience what you experienced, I still feel offended too because <laughs> I love the Philippines and there's definitely there's tons so of much things to do. to do out there. So much yeah. to do. I mean, Trizzy goes back more often than I do. Like she goes <laughs> every year. You go every year and we find a billion things to do other than scuba dive. <laughs> yes. Mainly because you're not certified yet. <laughs> but that will change, I'm sure. Yes. But yeah, it was just such a weird thing to say in another moment that like literally stopped me in my tracks. I mean, mm. like I said, I was extra sensitive Yeah. from not completing the course. But at the same time, I'm like, why would you say that yeah. to anybody? Like, don't 
be doing that to people. I know. Yeah, there's stuff that. It's just such a, it's something for something that's so privileged, Mm -hmm. like traveling itself. I'm just, I was like shocked. Yeah. And like in particular, like, like I said, I was in Cebu. There are, you can go canyoneering. You can go watch the whale sharks. You can take a motorbike and go to all the waterfalls around the island. You can go snorkeling. You can go swimming. You can lounge on the beach. Should I continue? <laughs> we only have a few minutes. I on know. This. <laughs> like that's the, how many things you do in the Philippines besides scuba dive. Right. I will say it did recently on a global stage win best diving destination in the world. Nice. So I do highly encourage okay. scuba diving in the Philippines. Yeah. It's just not for me. Right. That's all. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, my unexpected travel moment happened in one of your favorite places <laughs> London so London was my first solo international trip and I was super excited about it um and then it quickly took a turn where I was like I don't want to do solo traveling like it's not for me I'm supposed to be with Maui mm-hmm. on all my travels mm-hmm. from here on out so what happened was March 2023 I had went to London And I had a friend living there at that time because she was doing like a work internship. So met her there. We had tea time. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, we walked Bond Street just to uh, kill some time before we were going to go to this live music show. And Bond Street is very... I would say it's somewhat similar to Beverly Hills Rodeo Drive. Busy. Busy as well. They have this department store called Selfridges, which is kind of like a Bloomingdale's because inside you have the Louis Vuitton purses, you have the Dolce & Gabbana, high-end luxury designer products. And uh, I got pickpocketed right outside or maybe inside. Who knows? Um... I let my guard down because Mm -hmm. I thought, you know, London and I'm in this beautiful neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I'll be fine. Wasn't really thinking user user error. Basically, I had my fanny pack behind me for literally just five seconds. And then after that five seconds, I realized, oh, shoot, let me move my fanny pack to the front. Mm -hmm. Only to come across after leaving the Louis Vuitton department that my bag was open my Insta360 was gone. My Peak Design camera strap that's $50 oh was taken. God. But luckily, it wasn't attached to my Sony camera mm-hmm. that they could probably have pulled it out and me not knowing. Yeah. So I let my guard down and that really took me, that, was, that took me off guard because mm-hmm. I had so much love and expectation for london Mm -hmm. seeing from your experience that because you always talked about how much you love london and it's a big city yeah and i don't hear um a lot about or at at least that time i didn't hear a lot about pickpocketing in london in london yeah pickpocketing would happen i didn't get pickpocketed in egypt which Mm -hmm. i hear a lot about Mm -hmm. i didn't get pickpocketed in a lot of other countries that i went to that i always hear Hear, people say be careful be careful so for that to happen i was just like it set the tone kind of for the trip and that happened at the beginning of the trip too. yeah so i was like pretty down i was lonely Mm -hmm. i didn't have maui to you know comfort me or anything um and uh, yeah, I just had to maneuver mm-hmm. the whole trip. Just have well, have that in hindsight. Like, it's oh. a lot of things. You lost devices, mm-hmm. which you paid hundreds of dollars for. Yeah, you felt bad for yourself because you let your guard down, right? Yeah. Like Trizzy's very meticulous about keeping guard over stuff. You know, doing the tapping, making sure she got yes. everything. Like that's the kind of person she is. Yeah, you know. And then someone's up all up in your personal space, right? You know, like there, there's a lot of reasons mm-hmm. that to feel down and out about right, that. Yeah. And to kind of try and break the barrier of like solo female travel yeah. too. Yeah. And uh, for me, and this this is not for all solo female travelers. Like for, for that mm-hmm. to happen to me, I was like, okay, I'm not meant for this life. Oh, that's like, sad. Yeah. And right. So. After like one incident. Yeah. You're for, you know, the first time you do it. Exactly. That's tough. And just talking about it, I'm like shaking yeah. again because I feel all that emotion that happened. Mm-hmm. 
So, mm-hmm. yeah. Did you rough. have devi- the devices backed up or like SD cards or anything? No. Did and you have a lot of content on I them? I did. I had my content from Bath. I had my content on the really? on the flight. Yeah. So all you have was your phone and your camera content now, yeah. just not Insta360 content? Correct. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Bath, Bath also happened like on the next full day that I had in London, right? Okay. So it happened quickly and uh, I had the content in flight. Mm-hmm. You know, me eating my meals, me oh. having an empty seat next to mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, I lost all that. Yeah. And as like the, as a creator, right. that's your work too. So now you're, you know, mm-hmm. when that happens, it's like you lost your work. Yeah. Right. That's tough. And I had told myself before we left my friend's apartment that I would back it up or I would just leave the 360 there because I didn't feel the oh. need to bring it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I figured if it's tea time, oh, I could have the camera in front of us. Right. Showing like all our meals but i never even took it out for tea oh. time so it was kind of like i was beating myself even more yeah because yeah. of that that's tough yeah i know that's, yeah that's really hard <laughs> but that's not like it's not like negligence on your part you know i don't it's just anyone like that right. can happen to anyone unfortunately yeah. or it's like it's like one of those situations like oh you never think it's gonna happen to you right mm-hmm. yeah which i hate those oh yeah i hate thinking like that yeah because then it happens to you and you're like oh shoot right and here's the thing okay we had called a few friends afterwards Mm -hmm. and then this friend was like how did that happen to you you're such a traveler and i was like ah but oh that's i mean okay that's like a whole episode (laughs) i feel like that topic could be a whole episode it can be like even professional travel stuff yeah. happens all the time. All the time, yeah. To quote, professional travelers, people who are traveling longer than us, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. it's yeah. That one hurt too because I yeah. was like, I do travel a lot, but but you're not going to be you know, perfect at everything exactly. you do. Like yeah. that's why we have this episode. I, s- <laughs> <laughs> I literally missed like sidebar. I missed my flight from New York to London because I didn't. <laughs> This was literally two years ago, you guys. This is actually the most embarrassing thing I'm ever going to admit. No one knows this except for my mother and Kate, who lives in London. The most embarrassing thing. I didn't know I had to go to the international terminal for my international flight. And I missed my flight. And they said, we were calling you for an hour over the intercom. Was it an American flight? Oh, so that's what you thought. I see. American Airlines. And I had a transfer at JFK. Ah. Y'all, it was literally the silliest thing. Like, so amateur level. And this was only two years ago. (laughs) Embarrassing. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. I'm like, no matter how many years we've been traveling, like stuff is always going to go down, you know? Yeah. We learned so much from it. But then you you went back to London. I did go back to London. (laughs) Like in the same year. Would you take another solo trip? Um... Depends where. Okay. Yeah. 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 And Maybe depends on what am I doing. Yeah. Exactly. Different circumstances yeah. or what. Yeah. 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 Totally. I get that. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Wow. Thanks, thanks for oh, listening, guys. It was like another <laughs> another relief. Yeah. Like event. Yeah. Kind of event session. <laughs> but you know, that's what this episode is. It's like the moments that were kind of pivotal that made us stop in our track. Yeah. And stop in our heads and be like, what mm-hmm. just happened? Or yeah. did you just say that? For you sure. Know? So yeah, when I went back to London in December, the same year, I had mm-hmm. bought like a new fanny pack that had better <laughs> zipper. It wasn't even a lock. It was like, I made the lock myself. Oh, she made it herself. Right? Um, so yeah, I was like putting the fanny pack inside my jacket. Yeah, and- yeah she got reels on it. She got uh, reels yeah. on it. <laughs> Don't mess with Don't me, Don't mess y'all. with her, yeah. <laughs> well... Another example I have of a pivotal, unexpected travel moment. This one has to do with, I would say, the way you spend your money. Yeah. How you choose to spend your money when you're traveling, right? And maybe like physical abilities of people. So I I told Trizzy the long version of this. I'm really going to try to shorten it. I loved it. For the podcast. (laughs) Well, I was trying to set up the scene for her. Yeah. So anyways, I was traveling around with a Dutch guy in the Philippines recently. And this was just the first week we were in Bohol. We were going to a waterfall. We met a girl at the hostel. And she 
also went to the same waterfall and we passed her like our motorbike. She was leaving the waterfall. We were going up to the waterfall mm -hmm. and she told us, oh, it's like a short walk up at the top, right? But like a short walk in the Philippines, who knows what that can comprise yeah, of, right? How steep is the walk? How muddy is the walk? How many mosquitoes are on the walk? Yeah. How many rocks, rocks how hot are on the is walk? It? Yeah. Is the sun going to go down on the walk? Is there shade on the walk? You know, you know all these things, right? Yeah. In the Philippines, everything is unpredictable. <laughs> And so we get to like the entrance, which is governed by like locals, not necessarily like the government. And they're like, oh, there's not a fee, but you can't um, take your bike up there. The bike that we were on, the street bike that we were on. We're mm -hmm. like, OK, that's fine. But then there were some other locals that were like, we'll take you up because it's really rocky and muddy. We'll take you up on our bikes because our bikes are made for more like dirt biking mm -hmm. type. And I was just like me and the guy I was with. No, let's just walk up. It had been a long day. We were stressed. We were tired. The sun was setting, which in the I keep saying that because in the Philippines, the sun sets at 5 p.m., y'all. <laughs> and like we're trying to get we had to still drive back to the other side of the island, yeah. you know, like there were things we need to do. And then we're like and still we're trying to climb this mountain to this waterfall, try to climb down the mountain to the waterfall and then spend time at the waterfall. I'm like, did we have time for all of this? I don't mm -hmm. know. Maybe not. So we're like, let's just start walking. I'm not wearing the correct shoes. I'm wearing like street Tevas, not my functional waterfall Tevas. You guys know me. You know I love the brand Teva. And like literally it's the only shoes I brought to the Philippines or two pairs of Tevas. Wasn't wearing the right ones for this rocky, muddy, sticky terrain because it had raining on and off all day. And so we get halfway up. We didn't know like the exact distance. We didn't know like, oh, the hill was probably like a quarter of a mile, a third of a mile. Mm -hmm. We didn't know that. No one knows. We don't take out a measuring stick yeah. and measure it, right? So we're just walking, walking, walking. I'm literally slipping. And if you know me, you know I have bad knees. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how much more of this I can take. And like, I wasn't really making progress up the hill because I had no grip on my shoes. Okay. And so my travel partner goes, you want me to run back and get the guys with the bikes? The guys with the bikes were charging 150 pesos per person. So we would each be on a bike. 150 pe pesos per person, 300 pesos. That's less than six US dollars, right? Mm -hmm. This... Starbucks was almost double that price. Oh my gosh. He goes, I'm going to run back and get him because like, we're not going to make it up this hill. Like you're clearly uncomfortable. He was fine. He's like a foot and a half taller than me. So he was like running up this hill and I'm sitting here struggling. So he goes back, gets the guys with the bikes, the guys with the bikes take us up the hill. They were having actually a lot of trouble, but at least we weren't walking in the mud mm. anymore. And so they take us to the top of the hill. We walk all the way down because there's like 500 steps down to the bottom. And we're like, oh, you don't need to come with us. Thank you so much. Thanks for the ride. And then like, okay, we'll wait up here so we can take you back down. They ended up coming down with us anyway, which was nice of them. They took some pictures, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We hung out at the waterfall for a half hour. But I was just so frazzled and frustrated. I had to like meditate in front of the waterfall because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not having good experience. It was getting uh, dark. Yeah. And the guys take us back down the muddy hill. And it was tough. Like, we were scared the bikes were either going to fall or get stuck in the Oof, mud. Yeah. Um, but I was like, well, we're paying them for a round trip. So we might as well just, like, let them take us. Right. So we did. And it was fine. I ended up paying them the 300 for both of us. Like, the experience was okay. You know, it was a rough day before. We get back to this hostel. We run into this girl who was like, oh, it's like a short little walk, right? The same girl. I left out a little detail, actually. I'm going to mention this only because this could be a cultural difference, but I'm still speaking from my personal experience. The guy I was with is Dutch. I'm American, obviously. The girl that we were talking to, and this will play into it, is German, right? So they're both Western European. So we get back to the hostel, and the guy, my travel buddy, and the German girl were talking and she was like, oh, did you like make it up the hill? It's like such a short walk. And he was like, oh, well, Leah wasn't wearing like the right footwear. So we ended up getting like the guys with the bikes and like going up the hill. She's like that tiny little hill. You actually paid 300 pesos to walk up that short hill. Why in the world would you spend your money on that? That's so silly. Oh, my God. Why would you do that? And I'm like. Hold up. Damn. I was sitting next to her, listening to her basically make fun of us mm. the way or the, the way I spent my money. And yeah. my travel partner, he wasn't really trying to, like, defend me or anything. <laughs> but he wasn't also, like, speaking up either. Right. Because he he didn't care to take the bikes. I said I would pay for them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, that's fine. But 
the way that she was kind of cackling at the way I spent my money Mm -hmm. and the fact that like she didn't know I have knee issues she didn't understand like I literally was slipping back down the hill like I had no grip on my shoes to walk up Jeez, yeah and so I actually retorted back to her and I said you know what the way I choose to spend my money when I travel is the way I choose to spend my money because it's my travel and it was less than six U.S. dollars. And guess what? I can afford that. Yeah. So to me, it's a non-issue. Yeah. And then the co- the smile kind of dropped off her face because I'm like, why are you cackling so hard? Yeah. Because like you don't know people's physical limitations. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, uh, it was an eye-opening moment because... I don't know if that's a cultural difference. Like, I don't mm. know. Someone call me out here. If like, is that a cultural difference between maybe like a Western European and American? Like the way we do. I mean, we're all staying at a hostel. So yeah. we like to be on a budget. That mm. doesn't mean if I'm staying in a $15 a night hostel, that doesn't mean I can't afford $6 somewhere else. Right. So yeah, I thought it was really interesting and it stopped me in my tracks and it kind of bothered me because no, of course I would love to be able to run up this sprint up this tiny little hill Mm -hmm. and like be okay but I like (laughs) my shoes wouldn't yeah make it up the hill right and I'm like I spent way more money on other things that were not worth it (laughs) in the Philippines but I think it just goes to 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 show like I don't know like how are you going to judge someone on the way they spend their money on their travel yeah so it was it was just odd (laughs) and if you've only known her for like a few hours oh hours yeah like in passing jeez yeah it was odd yeah (laughs) Yeah, could be that. It could be the cultural difference in how they perceive. Who knows? Someone tell me what your thoughts are on that. (laughs) Well, great story. Both of them, both of your stories have happened in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. Wait, is my last, oh, shoot, my last one is about to happen. Is is it? (laughs) Uh, Okay, the last one I have um, is more of a thing that I hear commonly. Uh, especially when traveling like South America, Southeast Asia, places where like a U.S. dollar can go further is when people call like an entire country or culture cheap. Oh, right. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I try not to do it because from the get go, even when I first heard that, when I first started traveling, when mm-hmm. I first heard that from other people, what 10 15 years ago when I first started traveling it sounded so wrong oh so you felt it from the beginning yeah I was like this doesn't like you're calling that cheap but what's quote-unquote cheap to us let's just use it to like like a term I like to use is like less expensive or where our dollar Mm -hmm. goes further right much further but what is that what that is to us may be actually like affordable and the going rate for people in other country like the Philippines or yeah. Thailand or wherever else you're spending your U.S. dollar, right? Yeah. So I made a post on there is this coffee shop chain in the Philippines called Don Macchiato's that's like taking over the Philippines. It's great. Nice. Um, What is it? Like 39 peso coffee, which is 70 cents. So it's less than one U.S. dollar. And... um. Actually, my cousins did say to them that was cheap. That's a good price. But it bother. I don't know why it bothers me when yeah. people who have more, maybe like who, who are born and raised in the U.S. call that cheap. Hmm. So someone, I made a post about it. And then uh, one friend was like, oh my gosh, I wish everything was this cheap nowadays. And I actually like responded. I said, oh, you know, I prefer to say that like our dollar goes further because the reason Don Macchiato started, if you guys look it up, the reason Don Macchiato started is because the owners couldn't afford coffee at the time. They're like, well, why don't we make a coffee chain that everyone can afford? Aww. They were students. They were going through school. They were eating ramen for dinner for every meal. Yeah. Not just dinner, every meal. And they couldn't even afford a cup of coffee at some of the places they were going to. Hmm. And so they were like, well, let's make something that's affordable. So their target market is like students, like people who they once were. But. That's just one example I heard in the Philippines. I hear that all the time right. from uh, from like foreigners and people coming from like Europe and North America. I hear that all the time all over like Thailand mm-hmm. and whatnot. Like when I'm in hostels and we'll be walking around looking for food, people are like, it's so cheap. It's so cheap. It's so cheap. I'm like, can you stop saying yeah. oh, it's wow. so cheap? Because this is the normal price that a local Thai person would pay. Yeah. 
this is the normal price that a local Filipino would pay for their, you know, $1.50 meal. Like, that is a normal price for them. Like, yeah. for us, we could probably buy a few and we would savor every bite of it. But it just, like, irks me. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, that's eye opening, especially because you you told us that the owners of Don Macchiato yeah. said they couldn't afford coffee elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So that what is it? A dollar fifty could have been a lot for them. Yeah. Nothing to us. Yeah. So yeah. Puts it in perspective. Yeah, a lot. it definitely puts it in perspective. I'm like, that's like what's cheap to us, what's cheap to us is the going rate. Mm. In other countries, like that's the rate. Yeah. And like for some some of these prices, that's a few hours pay. Yeah. You know, they gotta work a few hours for that. Exactly. So it's just it's different. It's difference in economies, difference in currency, you know. Yeah. So I know it's not easy. I mean, it's not uh easy to avoid sometimes. Like the word kind of just rolls off the tongue, right? And you right. wanna say it out loud. But I try to be conscious of it. Even though I said, like, my cousin said it, and I thought that was kind of weird, too. My cousin, who's a local in the Philippines, hmm, yeah. she was the one who's like, oh, it is so cheap. And I'm like, also, you're work- <laughs> But I will say, like, she's working for an American company. Ah, I see. So I maybe see. She making, she's making American money, too. Like, who knows? Yeah. You know, I don't know. I didn't ask her about her pay. <laughs> also taboo. We don't talk about yeah, money Yeah, we don't talk US. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it was just, uh, I thought that was interesting i've had a few people recently say that to me hmm. like a few americans be like yeah. oh my god like it's so so cheap there i was yeah. like oh and i tried to i just respond back and i say i prefer to say less expensive our dollar goes further this is me personally i'm curious to hear what you think or what you say or if you think i'm just walking around like a chicken with my head cut, so. <laughs> <laughs> well that's what this platform is also here for we're mm-hmm. we're learning and we're teaching others hoping that others will learn and teach others too yep, exactly. and it just branches off into you know using more um nicer and yeah. inclusive, inclusive language languages. which is what rhino tries to yeah. do all the time on the app on mm-hmm. their social media yeah and you know i love the fact that the travel truths campaign came out we're learning a lot from that and that's you know like we mentioned earlier that's what ex- inspired this episode it's like okay what are some shocking moments of travel truths that we've had while we're on the road recently or not you know that altered our brain chemistry yeah and And they did so we sat here picking through moments that are like were pivotal yeah Mm -hmm. because i really thought i could solo travel but then that happened and i'm like (laughs) you still can i I definitely (laughs) still can but i'll just be like you didn't think you could at the time with my boxing gloves (laughs) ready to swing (laughs) For sure. Muhammad (laughs) Trizzi. Thank you to our sponsors, Rhino, for the opportunity to speak on our travel truths. And hopefully we shared enough of our experience and, you know, allow people to open up about their travel truths as well. Thank you for this platform. And check out the app wherever you are. There's tons and tons, like literally thousands of incredible experiences around the world from different travelers of all backgrounds and it's it's so fun to discover new places new things to eat new things to do on the app i know super fun thanks for listening in on the ticket to anywhere podcast y'all have a good one this is trizzy at triz inc this is leah at la and flight to find even more travel tips on budgeting destinations and our favorite items sign up for our monthly newsletter the check-in linked in the show notes or description. This is the Ticket to Anywhere podcast. Thanks for listening.